the rock upon which we stand. And what do they say? All other ground is what? Amen. Amen, somebody. So at this time, we are going to welcome to the podium to deliver the word of God, our leader, our visionary, the administrative bishop of the Church of God in Ontario. Please stand to your feet and welcome Bishop Lennox DaCosta Walker. And you know he got a doctor on that. Woo! Look at them shoes. Thank you so much. Leslie's a bad girl. A bad girl, a bad band, some bad people here this morning. Good morning. A good afternoon. Well, it's morning worship, so I could still say good morning because of the morning worship. I'm excited to be in church this morning, and I'm excited to know that I'm a child of God. But more so, I'm excited because it's Black History Monday month, and it is Black History Sunday here at Praise. To God be the glory. I am glad I'm black, and I celebrate my blackness. You may be seated. And welcome to Praise Cathedral Worship Center. I'm happy that you're joining us for our Black Easter celebration. And I'm so happy that your Bishop Lennox Walker will be ministering the word to you this morning, making an impact. Have a great day. I have been very privileged, and, and I count myself privileged. And if you always listen to me, I always refer to my past, where I'm coming from, how I couldn't read, and how they gave up on me, and taught, you know, the same, the black sheep in the family. I'm self-taught. I basically started teaching myself, reading books. And wherever I see potential, I always try to invest in potential. Take it from me. When I go to Africa and we give all those scholarships, those 54, 55 scholarships to those go guys in the Cameroons, don't believe we're just widely just investing. It's because of potential. Because we see the potential. It's not where you are today, but the potential that is inside of you, that is what is important. That's what I want to speak to today. If you notice the program, and I'm going to ask you to take your program out, and look again, it's deliberately written there. It says, your life has purpose. Where it says, pray, where the program is in the program. It says, your life has what? purpose. Your story is important. Your dreams count. Your voice matters. You were born to make an impact. That's what I want to talk to you about. And you ask me, Bishop, where is the scripture verse? As I speak to you this morning for the next few minutes, 
the scriptures will come alive. And so, Father, even now as I stand here with somewhat a heart that is filled and, yes, even with pain, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would lead us, God, and may your name be glorified. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I get a lot of pushbacks all the time. And I don't mind. I don't mind. Because we don't want to build another church. Another place where people come on a Sunday morning without order. Another place where people come just to make noise and clap our hands and go home. I want when you come here, you must feel inspired and blessed. When your children walk out of here, they must say, dear God, I see something that I want. Number one, I see order. I see a church that is in order. People not walking and running on the platform and grabbing the mic and doing weird stuff. I see a church where people not walking all over the place. I see a church where not somebody not yelling across the pew. I see a church that is in time. And I see a place, God, where I want to bring my children. Where I want to be inspired. And so with that in mind, first I want to acknowledge your Moses and your wife. These are some folks who came from Nigeria and Uganda. And are making a difference. Please stand. Wonderful people. Wonderful people. Powerful people. Silver Trust Media. We want, my, my brothers, I want to talk about the, the negative stereotypes about black people. I want you to understand that the root of all the prejudice was due to the bias and distorted scriptures. Did you hear me? Distorted scriptures to favor the racist perpetrators of the 18th to the early 20th century European Bible scholars. People have used scriptures out of context and manipulated folks. The justification of the maltreatment and inferior perception of black people, my brothers and sisters, this being based on the Nawa curse. Let me say that again. Sit down for me, everybody. The justification of the maltreatment and inferior perception of black people like myself is based on the Nawa's curse. According to Genesis chapter 9, verses 20 to 27. If you read that, you will realize that when Noah got out of his sleep, as, as a matter of fact, put it on the board so people will understand where I'm coming from. Genesis chapter 9, from verse 20 to 27. It says, and Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. Keep going. And he drank of the wine and was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. In other words, he was naked. Note carefully. I want you to remember this word, Ham. We're going to talk about it. And Ham, the father of Canaan. Note what it says. It didn't mention the Cushite that came out of Ham. We'll talk about it later. But it specifically say. Are you seeing that? Brethren, are you seeing that? And Ham, the father of Canaan. Note carefully, I'll talk about it later, that Ham did not only have one son, Canaan. He had four. But the Bible specifically talk about Canaan. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. 
and their faces were backward, and they saw not the nakedness of their father. And now awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, curse be who? Note carefully, he talked about that. Curse be Canaan. Know who did he curse? Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, blessed be the Lord. And you can read it for yourself. And it talks about Canaan. Canaan. We'll get back to that. So the misinterpretation of the Noah's curse was the impetus behind the apartheid system of South Africa, the slave trade and the colonization of Africa by Europe. Some of these effects, my brothers and sisters, of the inferior treatment of black are still felt today. Don't fool yourself. Many of the myths and stereotypes about black people are still believed by many, many in our society today. And so we need to re debunk these myths and move forward with the will and plan of God for this 21st century in our lives. Let me state this clearly. Let me say unequivocally that God does not discriminate based on color. I want to say that again. God does not discriminate based on color. Why? God is a spirit and does not have color in our humanity or in our human form or in an earthly sense. God's saving grace is not based on ethnic origin or skin color. God does not want anyone, anyone, anyone to perish based on 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. Is that what we read there? God does not want anyone, period, to perish. Jesus is the savior of all people. For God so loved the world. Acts chapter 10, 34 and 35 helps us. Acts chapter 17, 26 and 27 helps us. God wants all people to be saved. Can somebody say amen? So the negative narratives have sought to blind Amen. Many of us. But I come in the name of Jesus Christ to liberate our minds today based on the word of God. Can I tell you that God has always used the black people and we are on his agenda. Africa is not a dark continent. Africa, as a matter of fact, is the cradle of civilization. Africa was the birthplace of humanity and home to some of the world's earliest civilization. That is a fact recorded in history. And I'll tell you where to get it. Amen. As a matter of global story, Africa, the 14th century edition, 2013, page 3. It says, by, eight, by 2050, it is expected that one of every four people on earth will live in Africa. We are not dying. We will rise. And the same study tells us. It says that Africa was the birthplace of humanity. And that's where it comes from. A home to some of the world's earlier civilization. Is the black race curse? Say this with me. Absolutely not. A careful examination. Listen to me, black folks. Some who might be tempted to bleach your skin. I hope not. Some who are afraid of who they are. I hope you're not here. But a careful examination of black people in the Bible. 
and their contributions to human civilization prove the black race is not cursed. So how do we debunk that? Let's get into the text. Genesis chapter 9 from verse 21. The Bible says, and he drank of the wine. And you know it, you know the whole stuff. To verse 27. But note carefully, Noah had three sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But Ham, that exposed the nakedness of Noah. He had four sons. Cush, according to the scriptures. Miserium, Foot, and Canaan. Four sons. Whom did Noah curse? Not Cush. Who is Cush? And who are the Cushites? The Cushites are Ethiopian. Noah did not curse Cush. The black race descended from Cush. I don't know how it happens. So the black race came out of Cush, who are the Ethiopians. Cush, the Ethiopians, the father of the black races, was already blessed based on Genesis chapter 9 verse 1. Put it on the board. He was in his lines. And God bless Noah and his sons. That's what the Bible says. The only one the Bible tells us that Noah cursed was Canaan. And who are they? The Greeks are descendants of the Canaanites. And the Greeks are never, never look like us. So we need to look in scripture, my friends, and let nobody fool you. Go study theology. The Canaanites are the Greek people. We don't hear people talking about the Greeks being cursed. We hear them saying the black race was cursed. I want you to know that what God has blessed. It is a myth. You are important. You are powerful. You have brains. You have ambition. Don't listen to that myth. Don't let nobody tell you you can't. And that you're not important. I am not cursed. I have the blessings of God upon my life. It is said, the fulfillment of the curse of Noah was on Canaan. They were conquered by the Israelis, by the Jews. But note something more in scripture. Remember that, go read the scripture for yourself. But Cush had a son by the name of Nimrod. You can read about Nimrod in Genesis chapter 10. When you read about Nimrod, Nimrod, Cush son, which means Cush black son, built a city. Cush built the best. The city was so big and impressive that it got, God, it got God's attention. Brothers and sisters, this is Bible. Go read your Bible. I could spend time, but time here today and tell you about Nimrod. Because if we take you in Genesis chapter 10, and you read it and see what type of city Nimrod built, it was so impressive. 
And we understand, and I'll tell you about it later, why God brought it down. Because sometimes when God promotes us, we forget who we are. Nimrod, a black man, was the son of Cush. He built a kingdom. He built not only a kingdom, but read Genesis chapter 10. Kingdoms. Civilization. Keturah was Abraham Cushite's wife. Go read it there in the book of Genesis chapter 25. It's there. Keturah was Abraham's Cushite. In other words, say Ethiopian wife. And she bore Abraham six of his eight children. Though they were disinherited based on, if you read the text, you will notice that Abraham didn't give them anything. Jethro, the priest of Midian, go read the text again, was the descendant of Midian, the son of Abraham. Jethro became the counselor and teacher to the greatest leader in Israel. Who was Jethro? Black man. And he was the one who counseled the greatest leader that God called. And that is why in church government, you talk about the Jethro principle of delegation. And Jethro said to Moses, you're going to kill yourself. We understand that Moses was a Jew. We understand that he was different. We understand that he came out of Israel. But my brothers and sisters, when Moses, when God called Moses, and Moses was about to kill himself because of the work, a black brother by the name of Jethro said, No, Moses, you, you have to delegate. You tell us we're not important. You need to know these facts, biblical facts. Can I get amen from somebody? So tomorrow when you wake up, and say, so where is my contribution to scripture? You start, go back, and you're going to say, what about Nimrod? What about Keturah? What about Jethro? What about these guys? And I have more to tell you about. And so when you talk about the principle of delegation, people talk about the Jethro principle. Moses loved black woman, boy. Because there was another one by the name of Zipporah. <laughs> Moses had some girls. Go Numbers chapter 12 and verse 1. Moses' wife Zipporah was a black woman. Go read it. And Moses asked. <laughs> when Moses needed help somebody to tell him how the way to go. He went to Hobab. To be the scout of Israel. In Numbers chapter 10, 29 to 32. Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, was the descendant of Ham. You're not reading, man. And who was Solomon? Which, what is that telling you? That Solomon was a black man. Brilliant. And the Bible says there was never one like him in Israel. Brothers and sisters, that is why you've got to be careful who speak into your life. Some of these European theologians have distorted the scripture. But I come to tell you today, we have a part in God's plan. We are important. That is why we must get up and make an impact. So when Martin Luther King says, a man must not be judged by the color of their skin. Don't let anybody judge you by your skin. My brothers, you have ability. Get up. If you've got to go back to school, go back to school. But don't be a bomb. You have it inside of you. I know a lot of people love to celebrate people when they're dead. Because people sometimes cannot see what you're doing. One person when he walked away said, you're too corporate and you're too business like sir I'm not just being corporate and business like I want to tell my people the God who saved you is the God who also blesses you 
And I said, sir, we need to get rid of this lie. We are people. That's why I don't sing it. I want to go to heaven and rest. I'm tired of staying down here. What a lie. And if you're 100 years old and you're sick with cancer, you call for prayer. Can God not extend my life? Can I talk to somebody? When I read in the book of Genesis, when God created this world, I hear God says, yes, you'll get to heaven. But he said, right here on earth, I want you to have dominion. Hey, take authority. Take charge. I've challenged some great people in this church, and they look at me like I am speaking a foreign language. Amen. Do you think the men who sit here and the women who sit here are greater than you? You can be a leader. You can be the next member of parliament. You can be the next leader of the opposition. Don't tell me about your color. Tell me about your ability. They're afraid to step out. Bathsheba and Solomon. Have you not noticed? They were included in the genealogy of Jesus. <laughs> Man, I'm connected. My blackness is connected to Jesus. And if I could go a little further, somebody said, and when you shall see him, there's no beauty in him that you should behold him. It tells me about his hair is like wool. Is not what you read in scripture. The hair is like wool. <laughs> I don't have much on my head right now. I shaved it this morning unless I'd have a little more. But it went, when, when I used to keep soul, when my head was like, not you, you have more. I used to have souls. We walk around with a soul comb in my pocket. It was soul pick and every now and again I touch it out a little bit. Ah, the woolness of my hair. Touch it out a little. In other words, what type of theology you're speaking? That's what the Bible says. My brothers and sisters, you're not inferior. Can I sh share a little more with you? Blacks were connected to God's plan of redemption. Simeon of Cyrene, which is now Libya. Syrian of Cyrene. That's what the Bible says of Cyrene. Where is Cyrene? Libya. Syrian, where is Libya? North Africa. Ah, are you with me? Syrian of Syria, the, he was the bearer of the cross. Amen. He was a black man. Matthew 27, 32. Good God, church, can you praise God? Matthew 15, 21. Luke 23, verse 26. Get up. Sometimes somebody said, look at him. Why he walks the way he walks? Some people came to this church some times ago and saw me walking and said, who, who is he? And they thought later on, they said, oh, I understand the man walks with confidence. I told, listen to me carefully. I told the men in Cleveland, Tennessee, Dorothy Elaine Walker was there. Amen. I told them in conference. The only one that looked my say, I said, gentlemen, I take no back seat to no man. That's Period. No backseat to no man. If you have a point, I have won. With all due respect, I, am, I have a seat at the table. Are you with me? My brothers and sisters, hear me out. You are important, black people. But I have more. Can you give me a few more? Today is different. By now we'd be finished. What, on the day of Pentecost, there were black people around who heard the gospel preached in their own language. The Ethiopian eunuch, amen. Go read it. I wish if I had time. The Ethiopian eunuch was the first Gentile to be baptized before Cornelius, amen, the Roman. In, in, are you with me? In Acts chapter 8, 27 to 39, Africa heard the gospel before Europe. In Acts 13 and verses 1 and 2, amen, two 
I'm going to read this and show you. Two of the five prophets who commissioned the apostle Paul, amen, amen, and Barnabas were blacks. Put it on the board. Let, let us see it. Fun. Acts chapter 13, 1 and 2. It says, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, amen, and as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Nija, amen, and see the other same man from Libya there. Two of them, black people, amen, was there when they laid hands on the apostle Paul at Azusa Street, amen, the revival, the origin of the Pentecostal movement in North America was by William J. Seymour, a black man cannot talk to you for a while. It was the black man Seymour that God used in Azusa Street to bring the Pentecostal movement to North America. Can somebody help me here? Amen. All these big churches and Pentecostal movement in North America is not by any blue eyed person. It was by a black man. And by the way, he was almost sort of deformed. But God use him. Can I talk to the church for a while? That it's not about your ability. It's about your availability. And if somebody today. Oh God help me here. I didn't plan to do that. Can avail themselves to God. He will use you. I've met people all the time. Whom teachers told. <coughs> They were not going to come to anything. Listen to me. I am angry when I see people born in this country, in a place of opportunity, where a black man can become inspector. And I see people born in this country and don't want to exploit the opportunities. Brethren, some of your parents, let me say it again. I've said it often. I have more. From this pulpit. When the teachers tell you that your son or your daughter have a learning disability and we have to put them in special ed. And you run go to doctor and doctor say we have to put them on medication. Say hold up. Can, can, can I be a little bad boy here today? <laughs> I mess up your kids for life. Are, are you with me? My, 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 my son, when my son went to inquire, when he was about almost time to go to, the, the big one there, the one who just stood here with me, um, uh, to inquire about going off to university. And the teacher said, well, the counselor, this is not for you. I said, well, what, what do you mean by, so when they hear that I am coming to school, ask my children. When the teachers hear that I'm coming, every single one of them say, measure up, Mr. Walkers are coming. Because I am turning up at every teacher's door. <laughs> so I, I, I was in Damar's graduation when he graduated from the military and from, from the, um, the flying school. And they, 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 what, what, what is his name? The one who's in charge of the... The air, the, 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 what's called them off? What the general is called? The one. The one in charge of your base. The one whom they. The what? Bigger than that. <laughs> anyway, he was given. He was given the speech at Damar's graduation, and Dart and I were there, and we basically call him Spot because he was the only black one, and we were the only black parent. The only two of us in Winnipeg were the train, the pilots in the Canadian Air Force and the graduation. And then I heard a man said, tell me something. How comes a student can graduate with an hundred average? You know who he was talking about? Who was party was talking about, you know? <laughs> Spot. The 
question I want to ask. Why is it that the prison is filled with so much potential? Parents. Parents. Can I say one or two things before I move on? Many years ago, I came here 33 years ago. Damar came here and was three. The rest were born here. And when I came here, Mr. Bob Delaney, I heard them referring to the Indians. They were just moving here. They used to call them Patti. But they took it. They took it. You know what they did? The Paki gave their kids no-name shoes, but pump into their education. Today, some of the best doctors are Indians. The CEOs, the owners of company. Let me tell you something, black parents. They say they want Nike to go to school. You will get Nike after you achieve it. <laughs> you I heard one young lady said, I'm going to give my daughter what I didn't have. And a two plus, she gave her a birthday that cost thousand and I cried. I said, what an idiot. Because by the time they came to cut the cake, the baby was sleeping. No, nothing that was going on. She said, I'm going to give my daughter the name brand. What a fool. Before she invests in the education of the child. I'd rather my child be known as the one who wear the no name to school. But later on you can say. <laughs> you see a man who. Whenever the world has been in a crisis, the black man, the black man, the black man has always appeared on the scene. After the flood, when the world needed a leader, God called whom? Nimrod! When God wiped out this world after Genesis 8, go read it. The first leader that came on the scene that built cities was an Nimrod, the black man. Are you with me? Folks, celebrate your blackness. You don't need no cream to lighten up your skin. Walk in more sun and get blacker. So write these down. I want you to note these. He said, after the flood, when the, the world needed a leader, God called Nimrod, the son of Cush. Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 to 9, and 11, verses 1 to 9. Secondly, when Moses was taken out of Pharaoh's camp, are you hear, hearing me? It took a black man, Jethro, to teach him the ways of God. Exodus chapter 18. 17 to 26. Listen to me more. When the people of Israel were going to the promised land, it took a black man, Hobab, to direct them to the promised land. Go read it, Numbers chapter 10, 29 to 33. In other words, God, God, who has no color, has always relied on us, if you want to say it that way. Amen. In times of crisis. Because when Moses needed a spy, before he got to the promised land, go read it for yourself. He'd go back for Hobab. Amen. When it was time, when it was a time of crisis and nobody could speak to David, go read it in 2 Samuel chapter 18, 19 to 21. Amen. He's Maz. Amen. He ran faster than the Cushite, but he didn't carry a message. It was the Cushite 
the Bible says, that brought the message to David when David was in trouble. Are you with me this morning? You see, we don't want to talk about it, my brothers and sisters, because it's one of those touchy subjects. Amen. When Jeremiah the prophet was put into a dungeon and Israel was in crisis, it took an Ethiopian eunuch to set him free. It is there in Jeremiah chapter 38, 7 to 13, 39, 15 to 18. Go read it for yourself. The young Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you hearing me? The young Jesus Christ was taken to Egypt, not Africa, for safety from a wicked king called Herod. Where did Jesus go and hide? Where? Egypt, the European, the English, the British, they call them the Middle East, but Egypt is not Africa, the continent of Africa. Jesus said, I want safety for my son. Oh, God Almighty, where did Jesus go? Africa. That is in the scripture. Implicitly stated in the scripture. When Jesus was going to the cross, my brothers, it took a black man to carry the cross. Are you with me? When it was time for Paul to be sent to the mission field, it took black men to lay hands on him and send him all. I told you that a while ago. You're going to Egypt, the pyramids, Amen. Are they? Where are they? Not in Europe. In Africa. Oh God, right there, up there in Africa. My, it is said, Amen. I can print this off and give you the sources where I get this information. It is said, Africa is the last frontier of globalization. It says six out of ten fastest growing economies in the world are on the continent of Africa. Ghana, it is said, by Bloomberg Magazine. By Bloomberg Magazine. By whom? Bloomberg, the most respected what? Financial magazine. Bl Amen. He said, Ghana is the best place to invest in the world now. You want to invest, go to Ghana. It is our time. Can you put Esther chapter 4 on the text there? And let me just spend one minute here and I'm done. Extra chapter, Esther chapter 4 and verse 14. Look at us, some of us, 14, who say we don't want to do anything. Here's what the scripture says to us. Because some of us have to step out front and people beat us like we have no sense. But here's what the text says. When Israel was in trouble. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time. Note. Then shall their, their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. It will come. But it will come from another place. But thou and thy fathers thou shall be destroyed. And who know it? So other nations will help us. Other nations will help you. But your generations will be just destroyed. If you do not speak for your people, the Chinese will offer you help. The Italians will offer you help. They will help you. But your generations will be destroyed. It's going to take a black man to speak for the black man because he understands the black man. Hear me today, Praise Cathedral. You can run any and anywhere, but it's going to take us who understand us to deliver us. Therefore, us need to speak up for generations. Let me show you something. And you can call me political as much as you want. But it's Bible I preach. You want a house? Other nations will help you get a house. But where is your money? It's gone from your community. There is no systematic transfer of wealth from other nations into our wealth. Into our, into our nation. But we transfer everything we have 
into everybody else until we get up rise up stand up speak up my brothers and sisters our children children will be poor we will get deliverance but our children will be destroyed So when these black men hold a black boy, they will say to him, listen to me, man. I can do this with you. Come, let me talk to you. Let me tell you what you must do and you mustn't do. This will kill you. By the way, when a black man pull you over, don't, don't go, go boost you up and say, oh man, me a black man like you, man. You go on to aggravate them, do that. You got to respect. <laughs> let, let, let me, let me tell, let, give you a principle. You know why Israel spent such a long time in, in bondage? Because the same enslaved people couldn't understand when God raised up one of its own. Slave will never deliver slave. Because slave always have that same slavish mentality. It's going to take one that God pulls out and educate to deliver the masses. So when God raised up Bishop Walker, for God's sake, man, don't pull me down. Stand behind me. Oh, God Almighty, work with me. Oh God, pray for me that God will help me to deliver many because I come to tell you today this race cannot continue the way we are. I'm done. I'm almost done. I didn't plan to go this, this far. I sat there this morning. I could hardly get up because my heart was burdened. Because I realize that some of us don't even love ourselves. Let me close by saying this. Together as one. Oh God. I have. Or I had. To some people. You know, some people, you just carry them in your life for a period. And that's nothing wrong with that. Some people, you got to break. I, I love people, but I have no problem to cut you off. I, and that's, I don't hate you. I'll cut you off. I don't want to have fellowship with you. I will not eat with you. I will not go to your house. Because you become such a liability. I love you from afar. Because I understand. There's some people don't understand where you're going. And they'll use every tool to break, keep you down. The, the space shuttle, like I've said often, the booster rockets are important. But if they continue with the spacecraft, they're going to blow it up. They got to be shredded after a certain altitude. There are some people, there are some friends you can't carry with you. There's some of you here today will not get this because you're afraid of this. You're afraid of your color. You're afraid of who you are. But let me close by telling you. That, but we need to work together. As black leaders, we need to abandon the self-centeredness of Nimrod. That's why Nimrod failed. She could. Can I talk to you about that? It was not that God didn't call Nimrod. There are people who said, well, God called me, and therefore, no, 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 no. God called you. But you remaining with God is based on condition. It was God who called Judas in. It was Jesus who called Judas. Deliberately said, come man, you must be one of mine. You know, we have this misconception. Oh, I am called and therefore, you better understand something. It was Jesus who said, you must come follow me. It was the same Jesus who called Peter. He said, I'm going to change your name because I see potential in you. Peter failed. And Jesus had to say, when you are converted, this is what needs to happen. He failed. 
God was merciful with him. But it's the same God who called Nimrod. And what happened to Nimrod? He became self-centered. Are you hearing me? And because of that, it messed up the very plan that God had for him. So as black leaders, we need to abandon the self-centeredness of Nimrod, which messed up God's plan. We must collaborate, in other words, come together and work together to bring the glory of God to our community. The greatest weakness of black people all over the world is division. Cannot stand to see the success of one. We allow the devil to use every tool to bring us down. But can I draw a circle around this pulpit here today in the name of Jesus Christ. This brother will succeed. This ministry will succeed. We must succeed in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because we are called to take Mississauga for the glory and praise of God. We must create an impact. Greatest weakness. Africa will be farther ahead. Further ahead. We cannot be self-centered. We allow the people to come in and buy them out. When I go to Africa, and I've been all over, from north to south, from east to west and central. The first time I went to East Africa, I saw the people building huts. And before their houses were little pools of mud. I said, what's that for? He said, Bishop, they didn't go buy bricks anywhere. They just throw water on the earth. There's so much mineral inside here. And the bricks were as tougher. They were tougher than your blocks. He said, the land is rich. But we are divided. Can I call for a unity? Can I call for a unity? Can I, listen to me. There are black folks that I vote for. I might not agree with them in everything, but I realize who they are. And they can speak for me. And therefore, they're going to get my support. Brothers and sisters, I beg you, Praise Cathedral. I walk around day after day, and I'm done now, day after day. God, how can I empower my people? You have called me and given me a voice. How can I empower my people? All I need is the right spirit, the right attitude, and we can take the world. The greatest weakness, let me say it again. The greatest weakness of black people all over the world is division. Can I tell you that Satan knows when black people are united, they can do mighty things. It was proven with Nimrod. They can be, become religiously dangerous or righteously dangerous. Brethren, let us come together as black leaders, as black people, for the sake of the destiny of our generation. May the Lord of heaven bless you. May the Lord of heaven allow his grace to be upon you. We are powerful. We are powerful. Can I say it again? We are powerful. Listen to me. Listen to me. This church, even though it's raised up by God, if we're not careful and stay focused, stay focused to the principles that I lay down here, order. I don't care who you are. You violate the principle of order here. I don't want you around me. God will send somebody else. Brethren, we can do it. We are powerful. We are. Let's create an impact in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit.
Stand with me. Father, I've delivered your word. She called Abakush. You have left this word on my heart and for weeks, for weeks, for weeks it couldn't leave me. I've delivered it. I pray that somebody would leave here not wasted but blessed, determined to make a difference in the name of Jesus. Let me ask you, stand up. We're done. If you're going on a road and you realize that you are halfway down that road and you realize you're going in the wrong direction, what do you do? You can do one or two things. You can say, you know what? I'm halfway. I can't be bothered to turn back. I'm going to continue. 